Hi everybody, I'm Connor Schultz. I'm the marketing here with Detail King, and we're joined today by Jimmy Williams. How's it going, guys? So, basically, what we wanted to go over today was information and details about our training school and what the experience with doing training twice, in fact, actually was like. So, uh, first, I'm going to ask you, Jimmy, why did you choose automotive detailing as a career path? Uh, that's a great question, Connor. Um, and I chose automotive detailing as a career path for several reasons. Uh, the largest being is my passion for cars. Mm -hmm. um, ever since I was a kid, you know, I've had a great passion for different yeah. automotive vehicles. And not only that, but, you know, keeping them clean and stuff. And right. from a young age, I got really interested in right. washing cars. And it all started actually back when I had Matchbox cars. Um, when I was bins a, and bins full of them, right? Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. When I was yeah. a kid, um, there was this toy that was like a toy car wash. And you could run these little Matchbox cars yeah. through the car wash. I had that one as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I, I ran all like 300 or something of my cars through this thing, like every day, just because I thought it was the most fun like I've ever had. And, you know, my passion for automotive detailing kind of just expanded on from that point. And once I got my own, my own first car, uh, I started learning how to do different, different things with detailing on that car. Like, I remember the first time I used a random orbital for the first time polishing the paint. It was just a really cool experience. And I was like, you know, this is really fun. I enjoy doing it. Wouldn't it be a blast if I could do this as my job? Because then it would be fun to me and it wouldn't be like work. So, yeah. You know, I think that one of the best professions to choose is really what you thought you would be doing when you were five years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some exactly. people wanted to be astronauts, but no, automotive detailing I think is much cooler. Oh, yeah. Honest with you, right? it's, it's really cool, yeah. yeah. And there's always going to be a market for it because right. there's always going to be dirty cars. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what made you choose Detail King? How did you find it? I chose Detail King because back when I was in high school, uh, like I said, I was really into detailing, but I wasn't really sure if what I was doing was correct and if I was doing things the right way. And so I wanted to you know, learn how I could perfect my skills a little bit more, especially before I went into my own business. And my mom actually went online and found uh, this place called Detail King that they offer automotive training. Um, automotive detailing training. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. And I live in Indianapolis, so it was about a six hour drive away. It's a um, long way. It's a long way, yeah. So I had to, you know, really do my research and determine, you know, if it was gonna be worth it for me to come out here. And after looking at the website and the YouTube page and seeing all the great things that Detail King's done, I was like, wow, this is gonna be a great opportunity and I couldn't afford to turn it down. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's what made me decide to come out and find Detail King. So what was that first experience like when you were here? Uh, the first experience for me was tremendous. I actually attended the two-day seminar here at Detail King, um, where I learned how not only how to start and uh, maintain my actual auto detail business from a business perspective, which was really interesting for me, especially because um, I'm a business major at Butler right. University, and so kind of hearing those things um, that I've learned at Butler, but more geared towards uh, what I actually wanted to do right. in business, which is auto detailing, was really kind of interesting for me to be able to hear that interpreted in the in the field of work that I was actually going to be going into, and it was extremely, extremely useful to me to be able to hear that and learn that information, um, so much so that I was actually able to take that information I learned and go back and you know create my own auto detailing business with my partner. Sure. Um, and then the second day, we did interior and exterior auto detailing, which is another great reason why I wanted yeah. to come out because like I said you know I sort of knew how to do stuff but I wasn't sure if I was doing it right and sure enough when I came out after learning how to do yeah. all the different things that they went through which was plentiful like I learned way more than I ever would have imagined I was going to learn in, in a day right. um, but yeah I found out I was doing things a little bit wrong um, for example I found out when I was compounding the vehicle that you're only supposed to use a certain speed and I was doing too too low of a speed where you were supposed to go faster to be able to maintain that cutting speed right. Um, which significantly helped me when I went home right. uh, and started working on customer vehicles. It really cut right. down their work time and I was able to give um, a much nicer result yeah. to customers which kept them coming back in the door. Yeah, so you chose to come back actually after that so you were here a second time. Correct, yes. I actually came back a year later for the ceramic coating seminar okay. which is only a day seminar um, but it was really really useful because uh, back where I live in my auto detailing shop I had clients, potential clients asking me, hey, do you know, do you guys do ceramic coating? Right. Um, and I'd heard of ceramic coating, uh, but I'd never actually applied it or used it before. And I was like, yeah, we were open to doing it, but, but tell you what, before we do this to your car, I want to go out and, you know, learn how to professionally do it and actually receive certification right. um, from Detail King yep. to use uh, Jade ceramic coating products. 
Um, and I was able to do that, came out here, had a great experience right. once again. Cool. Um, with the training staff is extremely yeah. helpful. I uh, came out, they taught me how not only to use the ceramic coating properly, but like also how it works and different features about it. Um, and then taking that information, I was actually able to go back to where I live and start using those skills in ceramic coating customers' vehicles, which is not only tremendous now that I know how to do it, but also tremendous because um, the profit margin on ceramic coating jobs is just through the roof. And so it's a tremendous yeah. opportunity for any, any auto detailer to add ceramic coating uh, to their list of services. So you started your own business. You went on, you made a, you made a very successful detailing business for yourself. So what was that experience like? Uh, it was actually really interesting. So uh, I have a business partner uh, who works with me. We've been friends for a long time. We're both really into cars, yeah. um, detailing especially. Right. And we had an opportunity when one of our other friends, um, actually, his parent actually leased a garage yeah. in, in uh, the town where I live. Right. And um, we looked at it and we, we kind of hung out there with all our friends for a couple months and we're like, we could be using this space like, you yeah. know, better. And so we actually went and started my auto detailing business there called To Die For Details, um, and we work out of that it's garage. A good name, by the way. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we we took a long time to come up with it because yeah. we tossed around different ideas, but that one really kind of stuck. Right. Um, but yeah, it was a great opportunity, and he's actually uh, planning. My partner's planning on coming out here right. this summer as well and getting certified and learning how to properly use certain right. coatings and all of our all of our other different products, so he can better, better help the customer as well. So one thing that you told me, Jimmy, in conversation was you said the best thing about this business is that it doesn't. there's no cap to how much money you can make. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to work and how much uh, skill you have, really, which, I mean, you've garnered here at Detail King through our school. So what is something that we don't know about the detailing business? Like, what was something that kind of surprised you when you uh, started your own business? Something that really surprised me was the amount of interaction and the importance of interaction with right. customers. So everybody thinks about auto detailing. It's like, yeah, you know, like, you learn how to detail a car, you go do detail right. that car, like, you get paid, okay, the day's over. Sure. It's really not like that. Um, and one thing Detail King really caught, taught me is to kind of value the importance of the customer and really make a connection to them. Um, and using this information, one really important right. thing that I was able to do, for example, is uh, we had a customer come in with a Honda Accord right. a couple weeks ago before I came out here, and I noticed that they had um, Indiana, U Indiana University floor mats in yeah. their vehicle because we cleaned them out for right. it. And when, when the lady came to pick up her vehicle, I mentioned to her, I was like, oh, hey, you know, did you go to Indiana University? And she's like, yeah, I did. Um, we talked about it for a little bit, made yeah. that personal connection. Um, and so now, obviously, I have her phone number in my, uh, in my contact list yeah. to make future appointments. And the great thing now is that, you know, when she calls me or when I call her, right. because I know about that connection, I can right. bring that up again, which uh, the customer values that making a personal connection to them really right. helps them come back in the door and value you as a business and a person. Well, yeah, that's one of the things that we always try to do here is... Um incorporate not only the tricks of the trade in the sense that like we can teach you how to do ceramic coatings, how to wash a car properly, how to do all of the technical things properly, but there's another element to owning your own business, right? Because you can be a craftsman, but when you in incorporate that into a profit motive and actually try to start your own business, there are tricks of the trade for entrepreneurs that are kind of not uh, necessarily subject to only the detailing industry there across the board and these are things that people need to know so that was uh that's something that we like to do here so what was one of those uh skills what were one of those skills that you learned uh as far as entrepreneurial skills uh, that you found important here yeah so one of the main entrepreneurial skills i learned here was kind of how to pick your location mm -hmm. um Auto detailing, as it's been explained to me, is more of a luxury service. Uh, not everybody necessarily values or sees value in auto detailing because some people just don't really care about having a clean car, don't see the purpose of you know going out and spending X amount of dollars on getting their car detailed. Um, and so one thing I learned at Detail King um, from the business side of entrepreneurship was to actually determine the best location you can have to place your business in. You typically want want to place your business in an affluent area right. with people that are going to be willing to spend you know, their little extra side dollar that right. they may have earned at your business getting their car detailed right. um, because they themselves see the value in having a clean car yeah. and how it makes them feel and how they're viewed in their community for having a, a properly detailed car. Right, because uh, having a clean car, you know, it kind of signifies I'm competent, right? I'm mm -hmm. 
you know, my tie is my tie is neat, my T's are crossed, you know, my eyes are dotted and everything. Exactly. Um, and also the you know the advantage of being in an affluent area is that people who have you know very nice cars, these people know well at least most of them we would hope. We don't want to drive this brand new 911 Turbo through, you know, an automatic car wash right. and mess up the paint. You know, mm -hmm. I want this to look good and I want this to last, you know, a period of many years. Um, so one of the other things that I found was interesting. I mean, there's just such a breadth of technical knowledge that you have. You actually know a lot about like the different qualities of paints on car. Like you said that there's a big differential right between. For instance, like a BMW M4 and then the 911, you know, exactly. just as far as the paint quality, mm -hmm. because those are two direct competitors, two luxury brands. You would assume that it would just be probably high quality paint, mm -hmm. um, but it's actually not. So right. So yeah. So it's kind of just one of those things you learn as you go along with detailing. Is once you've worked on enough different kind of vehicles, you'll kind of get a feel for what their paint's really like. Right. Um, so for example, I have a BMW, um, and it from the factory has jet black paint. And this paint in particular is, the clear coat right. is much softer than other paints, which is good and bad. It's good because it's easy to correct it, the swirls and scratches right. come out really easy, yeah. but it's bad because it scratches again right. really, really easily. Whereas most Porsches, for example, typically have a much harder clear coat, which means they're much harder to right. correct. You gotta use a little bit more force and a little bit more technique and product right. while you're correcting it. Sure. But by that same logic, once it's corrected, that clear coat's harder and it's going to be harder to get right. scratches again yeah. when the customer's out driving around and etc. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just kind of one of those things that you don't think about um, when you're first going into detailing, but after a while you kind of learn the tricks, tips of, tricks of the trade and you kind of get to get a, go, get a different feel for how different car paints act uh, based on different manufacturers, weather conditions, where all, how many miles the car's been driven, etc. It all plays a factor in how you want to correct that paint. Right. So out of curiosity, tell me what your most challenging detail ever was. My most challenging detail was actually on a BMW. It was okay. a 2012 BMW X5. Okay. And Getting we, a picture in my head. Right, yeah. right. So this car's color was black sapphire metallic, which is one of BMW's hardest clear coats. So odd, yeah. odd for right. BMW and difference from my car, but a very right. hard clear coat. And it was actually, we were detailing it for a mechanic, um, my mechanic who we do a lot of his cars for, and one of his customers had just bought it from him and wanted to have it detailed before sure. he picked it up. And so he gave it to us and says, okay, like, take care of it. And it was clear to me that this car had been sitting outside under some trees for quite a long time right. because there was outlines of leaves that right. had fallen, gotten wet from the right. rain and etched into the clear coat yeah. really, really deep. And so what we, me and my business partner Kyle ended up having to do was actually wet sand this hood to get the paint leveled enough to a point where we could actually compound and polish right. it out to get it looking good. But we actually had to break down that clear coat so hard to get that etching out from those leaves. Um, and of course, you know, right. that's a pretty aggressive step. So we tried just compounding and polishing first. Right. And when it didn't do the trick, we were like, man, we're really gonna have to dig in deep here um, right. and do that. And wet sanding was something that I had learned how to do, right. but I, up to this point, I've right. never been really, really confident with it. Yeah. So. I was really nervous going into right. it because, of course, whenever you're doing a vehicle, you never want to leave permanent mm -hmm. damage on it yeah. that you can't take out. Um, but luckily, we were able to get it done, right. um, and it came out beautiful and perfect, and the customer was happy, and that's what's important. Right. So what would you say that you feel about Detail King and Detail, Ting, Detail King's school that would kind of differentiate it from the competition? You know, what, why is it that someone who, let's say, gets a job as a detailer at a car dealership, what are they learning here that they wouldn't learn in their training there? So at your training at like, you know, at a car dealership or something like that, you'll get basic detailing tips, et cetera. Right. Um, typically what those kind of places focus on, or even some detail shops in general, they'll focus on get them in quick, get them out right. quick. They're trying to make an easy buck and yeah, it might look halfway right. decent, but you don't know what kind of job right. they've done. Whereas here at Detail King, you come in and, and they teach you how to do it yeah. by the book. Like every right. single time, every single product you're using, they teach you how to do it the right way, and that's one thing I really value about this company. Um, as well as, they teach you how to do everything with their products, and then every single product you use that day or throughout your entire seminar is for sale. So they get you familiar with the product, how to use it, what it's used for, what its attributes are. So you're real familiar with right. these products, and then you have the opportunity to then purchase them and use them in your own right. business, so you don't have to go out and then try and figure out what a different competitor's yeah. product, how it works and stuff like that. So it's just really straightforward to the point yeah. and really easy to use and simple. So your connection to Detail King, so you've been to two of our seminars. What are you up to now? 
So actually now I am currently interning here with Utah King for the, for the summer. Um, like I said, I go to Butler University and it's required of us before we graduate that we right. actually complete two separate internships. And you know, I love being out here so much yeah. and I already have my own detail shop and I love detailing. Right. I was like, well, you know, this would be a great company for me to come out and right. actually learn from them and try and help them. Yeah. Uh, you know, with my current skills. Um, and so I was like, I reached out to Nick and, and uh, talked to him and he's like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. We'd, right. we'd love to have you out for an internship. And um, so I've actually been here for two weeks right. and we're already making a lot of changes to our social media platforms based on different insights and trends we've right. seen in the industry. Um, it's just really, really cool to be, right. be a bigger part of something, right. uh, like especially in this organization that I'm really passionate about right. and I've used their products for years. So it's really cool to, in a sense, join their family. Right. Um, and I'm really proud to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I am as well. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, because we're, we're in marketing, we're doing these, uh, these things to promote Detail King, to promote their business. Um, I'm curious back to your own business, the one that you and your partner have, your detailing business. Uh, what kind of marketing have you done and how, how have you kind of uh, infiltrated yourself in your market? Sure. You this? Yeah, so what we kind of do, um, we do have a Facebook page and we promote through that. Like, for, for instance, um, when we detail a car, uh, we'll take lots of pictures of the car and post it on our social media just so our followers and stuff can see that. Um, but more so, we're really focused on like the, the in-person contact with people. So we like to go to different car events and organizations um, around the city. For example, uh, Cars and Coffee, which yeah. is every, every yeah. Saturday or every other Saturday. In my town in Indianapolis, we'll go yeah. to. Um, of course, cars have to be perfectly right. clean when you show up. Um, you got business cards and yeah. everything, and it's basically just like you know, me and Kyle going out introducing ourselves to different car enthusiasts, right. explaining who we are, what we do, and that's actually how we get a lot of our customers. Yeah. And um, it's really great because you're working on enthusiast cars, right. typically higher end. Yeah. Um, so there's more of a passion for it, at least for me personally. Right. I really enjoy, you know, working on something that's in a sense a piece of art. Yeah. Um, and in a way, you get to perfect that piece of art um, yeah. and in a sense, sign your name to it. So it's just really, really cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how we get most of our customers, word of mouth, friends. Right. Uh, of course, you know, you do a great job for someone, they're going to recommend you sure. to all their friends. And uh, that works great when you're doing enthusiast cars because they've got a lot of enthusiast car right. friends. So that's kind of where my business has been out for the past year so. So what would you say the most expensive or most exclusive car is that you've ever detailed? <sighs> Personally, the, the most expensive car I've ever detailed is probably a BMW M5. Okay. Um, we, we have had opportunities to do higher end cars, but it's just a bit, um, a bit mind worrying to try and right. tackle something like that. Because for example, we had um, an opportunity to do a Lamborghini Gallardo nice. at one point, um, but it had heavy, heavy oxidation on the paint. Right because for whatever reason it looked like it had been left yeah. outside for years. Maybe it had been in Dubai for five years. Exactly. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never yeah. know. Um, and so I, I really just didn't want a right. chance messing with that and really, really ruining that paint sure. even more than it already was because I didn't want to be on the hook for a thousand, thousands of dollars repairs and paint job. Right. Um, because like I said, we've only been in business for a year. And right. While I trust myself and my skills, uh, I didn't feel at that time I was ready to tackle such a large process. Well, you know, oftentimes when you're in business, I mean, I'm sure you know this, that, you know, it's not necessarily all of the jobs that you say yes to. It's the ones that you say no to. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's, again, it's it's one of, um, you know, kind of the more soft skills of the trade is it's like, look, if uh, if I don't, if I'm not sure about this or I think there might be some liability on my part um, and I'm actually not even sure that I can guarantee a good end mm -hmm. result, it's best to just stay away, right? Because exactly. it's, you know, it's protection of your reputation and guaranteeing good work. Exactly. Yeah. And if you can't guarantee you good work, then you shouldn't be doing the job. Exactly. In my opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. well, All right. Well, thank you so much, Connor. Appreciate it.